YouTube was shaking. I'm making this video because one of my subscribers recently asked me, bro, what does your booster look like now with the new swing on? And I totally forgot that I never made a video for y'all showing you guys <laughs> what my booster looked like after I got the swing arm installed. I did make videos when I had the swing arm extensions and things like that, but I never actually made a full video showing you guys what it looks like. Well, here you have it. The swing arm I got is actually from G-Force Racing. Uh, I think it was a thousand and fifteen bucks. They gave me a military discount. So I think it was like eleven hundred or eleven, maybe forty beforehand but I think I got like a hundred and like 30 bucks off they make them to order let me see the time frame took about I think it was about three and a half weeks for them to make it it may have been a little bit more maybe between three weeks and a month they got to make it and then they send it off to get it powder coated as well I made this video for my subscriber his name is Chris Doro I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly if not my apologies not trying to butcher your name, bro. And also, I needed to make this video because, like I said, you reminded me that I never actually made an update video showing what this bike looked like with the swing on. While we at it, though, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a quick recap on all of the mods that is on this bike. ASV levers. These are the Amazon Special Grips. They're like 20 bucks. This is a stock windscreen. What I did was take it off and I painted the inside. The way the outside keeps that gloss finish and everything looks pro. My rim tape is from Moto Inks. You can get custom rim tape through them. Mine says Old World Disorder. My swing arm, once again, is G-Force Racing. My chain is an EK chain. My rear sprocket, I think, is a 46 tooth. I went up two when I had my uh, stock swing on and then I went up one extra when I got it extended. I also did the C cow mod with the grab bar because as you know if you got a Gen 3 booster if you use the C cow you cannot have the grab bar installed on it you have to do that mod and I did have a video up at one point in time showing you guys how to do it however now I don't. Brock's Alien Head 2, full exhaust system. I also have the Brox clip-ons. Plus, my bike is lowered now. As you can see, the forks come through these clip-ons would drop my front, I think, 0.75 inches or something like that. I don't remember the, I don't remember the exact measurements, but my bike is lowered, as you can tell. By those forks, these clip-ons are great because they actually give you a little bit more of an aggressive feel on a bike and it swings the handlebars out this way the way they're not so swept back and once again like i said also lowered the bike not just the front end and i also have <clears throat> gotta get dirty for y'all man the brocks lowering links and last but not least i got the brocks performance kickstand by the way, none of this shit was cheap. Uh, I gotta get up, yo, I'm getting too old for this. Also, this seat, I think this is the uh, touring seat. I didn't buy it. My homeboy Jay gave me the seat. He went and got a custom seat made and his seat, I wish I had made some footage of the seat that he had, but it was thorough. But uh, unfortunately, Jay recently got into an accident. His boost is totaled out, but he is okay, he's healing. So uh, prayers up to my homie Jay. And uh, once again, man, thanks for the seat, man. Great gift, I appreciate you. Last two things. If y'all remember correctly, my Gen 3 booster is a 2022. So you know the 2022s did not come out in an all black color. When I first got mine, it was black with that ugly looking orange gold trim pieces. Like for instance, like these side vents was the color, the front intakes, with that color as well. Uh, part of the sea cow around this area had that ugly looking color. And also this little piece of plastic there on the rear part of the tail had that color, but I never liked that color at all. 
later on down the line, I saw more mafia and he blacked out his. So I gave him a call and I asked him, was it pretty easy to take off the pieces and paint them? He said, yeah, just be careful. Uh, the only parts I could not do myself to get off was just front intake. And that's mainly because in order to get to that, to get it off, you gotta remove this entire dash off. Also, I had high output take off the tail to get to this little piece here because you have to pretty much remove the whole tail fairing and also the rear tail light, tail lights to get that off. And I just didn't want to do all of that either. So when I got it done, I actually took the bike to the shop and let them just take off all of the pieces I need to paint it. And I took the pieces and I went and got them painted. And voila, she ended up looking like this. Now, there is one final mod that I want to show y'all that y'all never knew about. I ended up putting some LED lights on this bike. I'm gonna show you what they look like first. And then right after that, I'm gonna show you guys how I got mine wired. That way, if you decide to put some LED lights on your bike as well, be smart about your wiring, all right? All right, first things first. Let's go ahead and let me get into my trunk. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I got mine running, all right? So, as you can see, this is the uh, the little box, the main power box. It also has a fuse, which is right here. And I took my wires and I ran my wires very, very precisely just because, you know, I build computers as well, gaming computers. And one of the biggest things about when you're building a gaming computer is wiring because that can hurt your airflow. So I'm very, very meticulous about my wiring. So installing the lights was super easy, but the way I ran my wires, but like I said, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Anyway, this is the master kill switch. So I'm gonna turn it on real quick so you guys can see. Yeah, I got lights in here in the trunk. And the reason for that is because these cutouts at nighttime, the light kind of shines out it shoots out of these little cutouts around the sea cow. So it looks pretty good. The lights came with two remotes. This is the maker of the lights. It comes with a key fob remote. And it also comes with this one. Now I used to get uh, LED glow lights, which were a lot more expensive than the, these ones that I got now. I got off of Amazon for 90 bucks. And I've also had the SK Glows. These LED lights work just as good as the $150, $200, or up to $300 LED lights you can get and put on your bike. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close the garage real quick so you guys can actually see. You can see right now in some form of how I got mine running. I'll do one so you can see with the light on, how I got it. And when I'm on here, you can actually see a little bit down in there, how they kind of reflect off of the inside of the fairing. I really wanted to put two of them in my intake <laughs> ducts, but I could not figure a way how to run the wiring because this, these holes run directly into the air box. So I couldn't really figure a way to make it work. But if I could have got that, the, that would have looked gangster, man. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn my lights off real quick. I'm going to shut my garage. Maybe I don't have to shut the garage, but... All right, cool. So this is what it looks like. This remote, I don't bring with me. I usually just bring the key fob. You can do a lot with it. You can turn lights on, turn lights off. Uh, you can make them uh, brighter or whatever, uh, brighter, you could dim them, whatever color you have. So I'm gonna dim these a little bit so you can see. I'm dimming them down so it can be a light glow, make them brighter. You also have a mode, a music mode right here. When if you're playing music, they're kind of like beat and I guess pulse to the tone of the music that you're playing. But uh, this thing is nice. These things are nice, I don't understand. I'm just flipping through some of the colors so y'all can see it. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and close this garage real quick.
Well, the garage light is still on a little bit, so I'm gonna be right back once the garage light actually goes off. All right, y'all, my bad. Well, my garage light taking forever to damn go off. I was trying to show y'all how this looks in complete darkness, but, oh, look at that. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> well, now you guys can really see how I got my lights ran. I'll change the colors a couple of times just so Not a big fan of the green. You just do straight white. That white looked dope though. So as y'all can see, I put, I think it's a 12 inch light strip right there. I think it's another eight inch one right here. And then I got two more eights right there. And then I got the two, I think they're like four inches strips in the tail section. That's what I wanted to show y'all. Let's go ahead and uh, use this instead. So I can show you guys some more of the modes real quick. So you got the flash. This one. I don't know, I wouldn't ride like that. I think I could slow it up. Let me see, I think I could slow it down as well. Yeah, so you can slow it down. You can use the up and down arrows to slow it down or speed it up. Where I could look like a damn a riding disco with some bullshit, I guess. Uh, what other modes are here? I never really use any of these other modes. That's the crazy part about it. Smooth. Still wondering why the hell my white is doing that. I'm really baffled by this. and it's, I'm not liking it. I'm kind of irritated. Like, what the hell is going on? I'll fix, I'm going to fix that later though. Don't know. Oh, uh, y'all, my bad. My OCD was kicking in. I could not figure out what the hell was wrong with my light. But I figured out what was wrong. This one light that's right in there, the red color does not work for some weird reason. But that's okay. Because now I'm going to show you guys how and why I ran my wiring the way I did it because of little issues that may come up such as this. Well, first things first, I'm not gonna go into detail about every single last way I ran my wires, but on each one of the light strips, how I did mine was some, most people will use hot glue and just glue them to the inside of the fairing so it faces out. What I did was I took each light strip, peeled it off and I took super glue and I used the dual lock Velcro and I put it onto the dual lock Velcro every single strip. That way, if anything goes wrong with a light now, I don't have to worry about it being totally attached to the fairy. It's just connected to Velcro and I can just pull it off and replace the light. My wiring here, my wiring here, I have it running up this way and up around here. But I have the extension connectors because I had bought some extension wires as well because it wasn't long enough out of the box to reach all the way to the tail like I wanted it. So now that this light is giving me problems with the one color, I can just take it, go in here, disconnect the one light, uh, the one wire at its extension piece, bang, pull this off, take it off right from the uh, from the Velcro and just put another one on it. Easy peasy, pumpkin peasy, you know what I mean? And I've ran that like that with all of my lights, even the ones here. I ran these up and under the cord, the wires running under there. I had to do a little bit of extra work and I had to take off the rear fairing to run it properly, but it's done. Anyway, look, y'all, I did not expect this video to turn out to be this long. Like I said, I just wanted to make the video really quick to show you guys what this bike looks like now with the swing arm and of course, Baltimore bad boy, baby. But as you can see the difference when all the lights are working, what it looks like. One more time, I'll go ahead and take that off. You can see how it looks now in comparison to the red that I was trying to show. Cause I don't have many videos left to make on this booster because she will be gone soon. And I am not going to tell you the bike I'm getting next. It's going to be a sport bike though. It will be a sport bike. Still got my sport bike right here. 
So I'm gonna always have one and one because sometimes I just have that need for speed and I gotta get my speed addiction met, you know what I mean? And a little FYI for y'all, if you do decide to install these lights, be very aware that these will kill your battery, even with the kill switch. I noticed that if I was to leave this the way it is, my battery would die. But like I said, they do have a kill switch. So once you turn it off, still kill it. And uh, always use a battery tender, y'all. A lot of y'all just be having your bikes sitting around. The only reason I don't have mine hooked up right now is because I was doing this video. But my tenders are right there. Right here. These are the Schumacher joints. Um, this one here is a 6 amp, which I use for the Roll Glide. This one right here is a 3 amp, which I use for my booster. All right, y'all, my bad. I had to put the phone down for a minute so I could plug in my battery tender. Anyway, so as you see, when you first plug it in, it's going to ask you to select battery type. You can pick lead acid. It's going to tell you again, push it again to pick lithium. I'm going to pick lithium. One thing I forgot to tell y'all was recently I ended up putting a lithium battery in here instead of the lead acid. Way lighter, the bike starts hella fast, and I love it. But even with a lithium battery, y'all, yes, it holds its charge way longer, but you still want to keep your battery on a tender. I don't know why people don't keep your battery on a tender, but once it's ready to rot, it tells me it's charging 95%, and that's it. And it also will maintain it. Once it gets to its full charge, it's just, gonna, it's just a maintainer. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go over here and do the same thing on my Harley now. So that's in there like that. I probably won't have to select this one now because I didn't unplug it from its power source. But I'm going to go ahead and push the button. It's already charging. Lithium. This is a lead acid. So unless you want to plug it from the power, the actual power source, you have to choose the battery type again. But I just push it again just now to show you guys how it works. Anyway, y'all, that's all I got. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you are new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed, bang that subscribe button and we're going to be in touch, all right?